time, I'm just going to bring um, a two-part message, just a short word. Um, one geared towards the children and one geared towards us as adults. You know, I don't know about you, children. What is the most exciting thing about Easter for you? Anybody? Yes? Jesus? Okay, yes. Shout it out. Chocolate. Anybody else? I can't hear you. Jesus, I can see a hand there. Chocolate, chocolate. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Oh, Jesus died on the cross for you. Well done. We've got a lot of spiritual kids in the house, isn't it? Very, very spiritual. You know, my, my fun part of Easter is Easter egg hunting. Yeah! Well, well, calm down, calm down. I know. You know, Easter egg, or if you take the egg, right? Can you hear that? There's something in there. You know, the egg comes from what? Chicken, isn't it? Doesn't it? You know, the mother hen has to what? Has to brood on the egg so that what? It can hatch and there will be what? New life. So the egg always reminds me of what? Of new life. But let's open this egg and let's see what is inside, okay? Wow. Jelly beans. Jelly beans. Wow, let's see if they taste nice. Mmm, very yummy. You want to taste some? No, 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 no. Okay, so there are some jelly beans in here. All right? But this morning, children, the jelly beans, you see, they look like the shape of an egg, isn't it? But they come in different colors, don't they? They come in different colors. So we are going to find out what each color means, okay? So if you take the green color, it takes us back to the day of creation, when God created the heavens and the earth. And Bible says that he created the Garden of Eden, where life began, and he had what? Fellowship with man. That is not the only garden that is mentioned in the Bible. There are about four gardens mentioned in the Bible, adults. Do we know what they are? Wow, I'm putting them on the spot now. Well, we'll come to that. There is a second garden called the Garden of Gethsemane. It was there that Jesus wrestled with God's plan of saving mankind. And Jesus said what? Not my will, but yours be done. So that is the color green. So anytime you are eating your jelly beans, you see the color green. Remember that that is where life began in the garden of Eden when God had fellowship with man. I have orange here. I was looking for silver. I went to the supermarket yesterday. Every supermarket, I could not find a silver jelly bean. I was disappointed. So I think I need to start my jelly bean factory and produce silver jelly beans. So we are going to use orange to represent silver. You see, in the garden of Gethsemane, after Jesus had wrestled with God's plan, we are told that one of his friends betrayed him. His name is who? Judas. He sold Jesus for what? 30 pieces of what? Of silver. And that is the same price that they sell slaves for at that time. Have you ever been betrayed by a friend? Jesus was betrayed by his friend. Well, we go to the purple jelly bean. So after Judas betrayed Jesus, he sold him to the, so, uh, the Romans. They came and captured Jesus. And they put a purple robe on him, didn't they? And they started mocking him. La, 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 if you are the king of the Jews. They started making fun of him because they put a purple what? Purple robe on him and said, prove, even, even if you are truly the king, 
Why don't you prove that you are the king? But you and I know that word. Jesus is truly what? The king of the Jews. So the purple represent the mockery that Jesus had to endure just for your sake. And then, if I can find it, oh my. And then we've got the black jelly beans. I couldn't find a black one, so I had to improvise. So the black represents our heart. You saw in that drama, John's heart was what? Was black because it was full of what? Lies. Greed, deception, disobedience. And that is how the heart of mankind is. Our heart is what? Is that. Can you remember on that Good Friday when the sins of the world came upon Jesus? Bible says that darkness covered the earth for a period of time because that shows the weight of the sin of this world. But that does not end there. You know what happened? Jesus blood was shed for us at Calvary. And when his blood was shed, you know, his blood forgave us of all our sins. Jesus took the blame for your sins. He took the blames for my sin. And when he shed his blood at Calvary, it gave us a clean heart. And we no longer had what? A black heart, but God gave us what? A white heart. Hallelujah. So, if you are here this morning, be reminded that your heart is no longer black. As soon as you give your life to Jesus Christ, your heart becomes what? As white. And that is how God forgives us. And that does not end there. Finally, finally, Bible says that on Easter Sunday, there were some women that ran to the tomb. And when they got there, the stone had been rolled away. And an angel was sitting on the tomb. The stone that had been rolled away. And they said, what have you done with our Savior? He said, he's not here. He's risen. He's alive. You see, yellow represents what? Sunrise. It represents what? Sunshine. It represents a new hope. You and I have got what? A new hope. And that hope is found in who? In Jesus Christ. So anytime the sun rises, remember that the tomb is what? It's empty. The grave is what? It's empty. We have new life and new hope in Jesus Christ. Did we get that, children? So next time if you are eating your jelly beans, remember what the colors represent. Okay? Hallelujah? Amen? Yes. So that is for the children, now adults. So what is the essence of Easter? What does Easter Sunday really mean to us? I just want to briefly look at five significance of Easter Sunday, and then after that we'll prepare a heart for communion. In Romans chapter 1, the verses 2 to 4, the Bible says this. It says, The gospel he promised beforehand through the prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who, as to his earthly life, was a descendant of David, and who, through the spirit of holiness, was appointed the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. So the significance, or one of the significance, or importance, or essence of Easter Sunday is this, is that, you know, The resurrection gives validation to who Jesus Christ is. That Jesus Christ is what? He is the son of the living God. This is no disrespect to the other religions. But how many religions can attest to the fact that their founder or their leader is still alive today? It's only in the Christian faith can we claim that the tomb is empty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is proof to the fact that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. There are so many people in humanity that have claimed divinity. But the question is that if you look at their grave, their bones will still be there. And even if their bones are not there, it's probably been removed for archaeological reasons. Hallelujah. But it's only in Christianity we can claim that what? The tomb is empty. Why? Because Jesus actually rose from the dead. Hallelujah. 
So Easter Sunday should remind us that the resurrection is a test to the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead. And not just that, that he is the son of the living God. Amen. In Matthew chapter 17, the verses 5 to 9 tells us something also about the resurrection. This is what he says. He says, whilst he was speaking, a broad cloud covered them, and a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am pleased. And when the disciples heard this, their face fell down to the ground and terrified. Jesus came and touched them, said, Get up, don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son has been raised from the dead. The question is that, why did Jesus tell them not to tell anyone? It's because, you know, Jesus prophesied his own death. He prophesied his own burial. He prophesied his own resurrection. So, the he wanted them to wait till the resurrection has actually taken place. So that people can attest to the fact that he is truly the son of the living God. It gives what? Credibility to everything that Jesus says. For example, if I'm to offer Pastor Chris one million pounds. You know? Or if I'm to offer you one million pounds. I'm sure you'll be, there will be an altar of doubt and unbelief. But if Bill Gates was standing here, or Elon Musk was standing here, and he offers you one million pounds, you will take it for who he is, isn't it? Because you know that what? Among the richest people in the world, these two are part of it. And that is exactly what Jesus did. You see, he told them, don't tell anyone. Wait till after the resurrection. And when I am resurrected from the dead, that it means that everything that I have said proud to that is true. Because Bible says that in him was grace and word and truth. There was no deception in Jesus. So the fact that Jesus prophesied about his death, burial, and resurrection, and he actually rose, means that every single thing he said is credible. Amen? So the resurrection should remind us about the credibility of God's word. So this morning, I want to ask you, what has God's word said about you? Do you believe it? Do you believe what God's word says about you? You can only believe if you know that the person who said it is credible. And I can attest this morning that Jesus Christ is what? He is credible. Amen? The resurrection also is the central word team or focus of the gospel that we preach we cannot preach the gospel of jesus christ without the resurrection amen turn with me quickly to romans chapter 10 the verses 9 and 10 which is one of the verses of scriptures that we use a lot when we are talking about the new birth. jesus um Paul wrote this. He said this. He says that if you declare with your mouth jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved. For with your heart you believe and are justified. And with your mouth you confess and you are what? You are saved. So you see, when you preach the gospel about Jesus Christ, there has to be an element of what? Of the resurrection. Because without the resurrection, the gospel's message is what? It's futile and it is not strong. The resurrection also established the victory of Christ over sin, over Satan, over the grave, and over the dead. Hallelujah. So if you are here and you are wondering, oh, I have overcome sin, and you think that you have arrived. No, you have not yet. Because Jesus was without sin, and yet still he was tempted by Satan. You need to have victory, not just over sin, but over Satan, over the grave, and over the over death. And that is one of the power of the resurrection. And then finally this. The resurrection allows anyone who believes in Jesus Christ to experience his life and his victory. Amen. Look, I think that one of the most significant things about Easter is not because Jesus died. 
is because of who he died for. Hallelujah. Jesus died for you and he died for me. And for that, I believe that is the greatest word. It is the greatest gift that you can have. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 17, let's quickly look at 1 John 4 17 as we prepare our heart for communion. 1 John 4 17, he says this. He says that this is how love is made complete among us. So that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like what? Christ. Amen? So, you see, you are a partaker of the life and of the victory of Jesus. As Jesus is, so are you. Amen? As Jesus is, so are you. It didn't say as Jesus was or were. It says as Jesus is, present tense. And in Ephesians, the Bible says that Jesus is seated where? At the right hand side of the Father, above principalities and powers and dominion and rule. That is your position. Just say to yourself, I am a partaker of the divine nature of God. I am a partaker of the divine nature of God. This is your position. So anytime Satan comes to you and he, he wants to cast doubt, he wants to bring fear, he wants to bring unbelief, remind him that the tomb is empty. And because the tomb is empty, you are a partaker of God's divine nature. If that same power that raised Jesus from the dead draws among us a quickens word, your mortal bodies unto good works. Amen. So that is the essence of Easter. So we're just going to prepare our heart as we break bread. So the elements will be coming around as many of us that are able to, with every eye closed. I just want you to take just a minute or two and begin to reflect on the essence of Easter. Reflect on what the resurrection means for you. The resurrection truly attest to the fact that Jesus is the son of the living God. The resurrection gives credibility to everything that Jesus says. It means that we can trust Jesus' word. When you go out there and you are sharing the good news with others, you know that there is confidence in what you are saying. There is audacity in what you are saying. There is conviction in what you are saying because you know that what you are saying is true. It is not feeble. It is true because when Jesus rose from the dead, both believers and unbelievers saw him. Hallelujah. So the resurrection should also remind you that the gospel that we preach at the heart of it is the resurrection of Jesus. And that you and I have victory over sin. You have victory over death. You have victory over the grave. You have victory over Satan. And then finally, you and I, we are partakers of the life and of the victory of Jesus. You have God's divine nature. Don't let the enemy tell you otherwise. Hallelujah. Don't let doubt tell you otherwise. Don't let the cares of this world tell you otherwise. You are a partaker of the divine nature of God. Father, this morning we want to thank you for your body that was broken for us. Bible says that unless a grain of wheat falls to the grounds and dies, it remains alone. But when it dies, it germinates and bears much fruit. Thank you for your life that you gave for us. And this morning as we partake of your body, I call forth life in the name of Jesus. I call forth new life. I ask that the resurrection power of Christ will resurrect anything that is at the point of death in our lives, be it our career, be it our marriages, be it our health, be it our finances, be it this world, plague with sin, immorality, and, un and ungodliness. We call for the resurrection power of Jesus. Lord, I pray that there will be new hope. There will be new hope for us, even as we partake of your body this morning. And Father, we thank you for the blood. We thank you that in the blood, Lord, we are exempt from death. 
Therefore, we declare that as we partake of your blood this morning, none of us will die prematurely. Now, loved ones will not die before their time. We declare the Father, O oh God, no scheme of hell, no power of the grave will be able to end our life here on earth until you say so, Lord Jesus. We declare as we partake of the blood. May the blood bring redemption for us. May the blood bring vindication for us. May the blood bring us exemption from all the cares of this world. We give you praise for your body that has been broken for us. And for the blood of the new covenant. We thank you that today we are under new management. Today we are under new ownership. We thank you that today we have partaking in the divine nature of God. And as we walk out of this place, we will not walk with our heads bowed down in shame, in guilt and in condemnation. We will walk out of this place with our head lifted up because the tomb is empty. There is a ray of hope. The sun is shining. The sun, Jesus Christ, he is shining and therefore we'll look up to him even in Jesus' name. Bible says that the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his, his disciples and said to them, take and eat. This is my body that is broken for you. So as many of us that have got the bread with us, why don't we take and eat? Amen. In the same way, he took the cup and he said that this is the cup of the new covenant which has been rectified with my blood. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. The blood of Jesus. Let's take and drink. Amen. Amen. What a privilege to be able to partake of the body of and of the blood of Jesus. I just want to invite the praise and worship team forward who have got a special song that they want to do for us. Why don't we give the Lord a big clap offering even as we welcome the praise and worship team. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're all going to sing a song called Revelations 19. Today's Easter and we're celebrating uh, the resurrection of our God. Amen. If all members of the choir, please come up. God bless you. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing Revelations 19. And this is not going to be sung just by the choir. It's going to be the whole church. We've done this before, if you remember, when we had the um, barbecue uh, last year. So we're going to do it in the same fashion. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The, the choir will start and then we'll join up. Thank you. Hallelujah. 
chosen, the Lord our God, He is wonderful.
that was wonderful. Little taste of heaven. Little taste of heaven. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, put your hands together. That's weeks and weeks of practice. Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful. Now I'm going to draw this service to a close. We've got another one coming that's just as full in a few minutes. So you know what it's like. We've just got to press on and we've got to push on. Um, but thank you. Thank you, team. I'm just going to pray the blessing over you. You see, when after, after Jesus' resurrection, after he's shown himself, as Pastor James was preaching there, to his disciples and to uh, people, uh, there were many, many who saw the resurrected Christ. Then after 40 days, he ascends into heaven, which is where Jesus is now. So Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, and he sends his Holy Spirit 10 days later. And that's what you're feeling and you're sensing and you're, and you're, and you're just, he's, he's with us now. He's here, the Holy Spirit. It's, it's that wonderful triune connection that we have. But the Bible says that if Jesus ascended to heaven, he blessed the disciples. Now, the Scriptures don't tell me this, but I believe the only blessing the Lord would really give as He's ascending, and you can imagine Him blessing, and He's beginning to lift into heaven, and His voice is getting quieter and quieter. It would be the, what we call the ironic blessing, the blessing that the priesthood did over the people, the blessing that the Father says over His family. And Jesus comes back one day for His family. Praise God. So I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm just going to say that blessing over you before we finish this service. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance on you and give you His shalom peace now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you can imagine his voice getting quieter and quieter as they're standing up looking at the clouds. And then what happens? The angels say, why are you looking up? The same Jesus is going to come back. Now you've got stuff to do. We've got stuff to do, friends. We've got to tell people about the Jesus that we follow. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. That's our job on this earth with the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. Oh, we've got to get busy. We really have. In Jesus' name. I'm going to draw this service to a close. You've been very patient. Um, and we've got hospitality out the back. There's a few Cadbury's cream eggs out back as well. All right. Fantastic. Pastor James gets the first one. All right. Um, and uh, as I say, people will be coming in for another service of this size in a few minutes. So bless you. Have a safe week in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus was. When Jesus was. Oh, when, he was. when Jesus was. When Jesus was. When Jesus was. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh happy day, oh happy day, when Jesus was, when Jesus was, oh when Jesus was, when Jesus was, when my Jesus was, when Jesus was, he washed my sins away. Oh happy day, oh it's a happy day, oh happy day, he taught, he taught me how to walk.
happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, it's a happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, when Jesus was. Where? 